Rock Guys would like to welcome Marcy Free, Unruly Child. How you doing today? I'm doing great, 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 great. It's nice to talk to you, Brian, again. No problem, no problem. Uh, you, you must be really excited about the new CD, uh, Down the Rabbit Hole, Side One. Um, let, you know, let's go down some of the tracks. I, I mean, I listened to the CD today and, uh, you know, really enjoyed it. It's mellow and, uh, you know, exciting. I, I, I really enjoy I, Well, I, I love your vocals, so, uh, you know, there, there's uh, no complaints here at all. Let's start with uh, This Is Who I Am. Um, Tell me a little bit about the song, how, how to come to light, and, and stuff like that. Well, um, that song was written by uh, uh, Guy Allison and Bruce Gowdy, my guitar player and keyboard player. And um, Guy has an innate ability to step outside of himself and understands my plight. Right. And uh, he came to me and said, you know, I want to do this for you. And I said, hey, go for it. Go, man, go. Right. And they... Um, uh, they did, and it just turned out to be awesome. Actually, there's, it's kind of interesting because at first, you know, it was kind of a, a progression. It, um, it, the, the first beginning stages of it wasn't exactly how it ended up being, but they kept at it, and I was so impressed, you know, that they, they just have a way of, you know, working and working, and, and Bruce was like, I don't know. And I said, yeah, man, there's something in that chorus. There's a spark in that chorus. Don't give up. Keep going. And they did, and it was just a, just turned out to be really cool because it's so, I don't know, you know, like somebody said that the, the album was, like, intimate, and it's very intimate because it's it has to do with, a, you know, we've been through as a band a lot of, a lot of stuff the last four years. Right. Wow. Just a lot of personal stuff, and um, it's coming out I, in in the lyrics and and just our approach, and it's it's exciting. It's a very exciting time. Like I said, we don't we don't we don't put restrictions on what we write. Right, right. I, actually, for me, listening to the CD uh, today, um, I, I felt like. A feeling of the Beatles somehow, like with the harmonies and and, and you know, like a Lennon type. Uh, that that's the way I I heard it through my ears. Um, I, I really like the harmonies and the background vocals and and. Uh for me, that that's what really makes the album. You know, when uh, you have great lead vocals and you have that killer harmony and background vocals, and, and you did a fine job on that. You know, so um, let's go to the second track. She can't see me. Um, tell me a little about that song. Um, that was just a, a fun little number that Guy came up with. Um, uh, that's another one written by Bruce and Guy. And, um, you know, it was just, it, like I, like you said, Beatles. We're very much influenced. That's how, you know, we, we come from that era. Right. And, you know, we'd be lying if we said that they didn't influence. I think they influenced everybody. I mean, the, the whole rock and roll industry pretty much was a was a, you know that was the genesis for so much of all the rock bands to, to still today it's just you know the wave is still going from what they started um, and that was just a fun little number I can't really say that you know um, you know what where it came from lyrically, but um, just you know, we all agreed that it was a fun number. Right. We had we had kind of like a feeling of like maybe early Queen kind of in there too. You know? Cool. Very cool. I love Queen. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, how about the title track, Rabbit Hole? Um, you know, um, t t what can you say about that? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that that track is so it's so awesome. I mean, it's just like uh, the t that was, to me was like our yellow brick road. It was just really, you know, it's such a signature thing for us, right. especially the background harmonies. Um, you know, guy guy um, does he he's uh, the keyboard player in the Doobie Brothers band full time on the road. You know, wow. And uh, he does vocals live with them. He does background vocals with them live. So his voice has gotten a lot stronger over the years. And um, I just love how his, his voice blends with mine. We together, you know, when, when we blend all our harmonies together, right. it just gives it. Same with <clears throat> our, 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 on, on the Worlds Collide with uh, uh, tell, uh, tell Another Lie. Right. Um, 
the, that, that chorus in there is just a blend of he and I together. It's just really great. Right. And, uh, you know, I think Bruce was inspired. He kept saying, I want to write something like this, you know. But, it, I mean, even it, it doesn't sound like, but still the inspiration for it was, um, was, um, uh, God, oh, my God. I'm sorry, I'm having a <laughs> aneurysm here. Uh, um, it was one of the 80s bands that from England that came out. Um, right. Wow. Um, wow. But um, uh, he was just really blown away by that song all the time. And I, I mean, it, I, it was too. It was a great song. But uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Cool, cool. Uh, Worlds Collide. Matter of fact, you just mentioned that. That was out on Frontiers, uh, and I think in 2010. Um, now, now, this new album, um, is everything done, you know, in-house and, and independently released and, and stuff like that? Um, yeah. Uh, we've, you know, Unruly Records is, is just a, something that we've always wanted to do. The band was Duran Duran. Right. Uh, by the way, it was um, something, uh, The Real World. Right. Was it Duran Duran? That was the song that Bruce really liked anyway. Came to me, so. Right. Um, and we're on, what are we on now? <laughs> <laughs> what question are we on now? <laughs> I don't even know, that's why I asked. <laughs> You know. Oh my God! Well, let's 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 go forward and go to the next track, okay? Uh, Breaking Hearts. Tell me a little bit about that. Breaking Hearts. Oh my God. Well, you know, I'm not the one to tell tales out of school, but Guy wrote that too, and um, I just say, you know, he's going through a really rough time with his relationship, and so you know, I hope we're all wishing him the best. But um, you know, he's a sentimental, sentimental, very in, uh, you know, sensitive guy too, and and I think he wants what we all want, you know, just love. We're looking for love, right? In all places sometimes. Right. Very true. Very true. You know, things just pop up every once in a while, and uh, you know, you can't help, uh, you know, like friendship turns into love, and you know, and it just happens, you know. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Tell me a little bit about Kindred. Kindred was amazing. I mean, um, like I said, that Bruce and Guy were are very, you know, they're like, they're true tunesmiths. Right. And their work ethic is really, really like, the, they have the tenacity of a pit bull when they get something. They'll just run right. on until they get it right. But Kindred was one of those inspired moments that they did in one afternoon. Right. They just went out to just do some writing, and one afternoon, boom, they had Kindred. It was like, oh, my God, you guys are killing me. Wow, wow! So now, cool. Now there's seven tracks on this uh, uh, release and stuff like that, and there's going to be a part two coming, I guess, eventually. Um, will uh, the second half of this uh, release um, be seven more songs, or you haven't really planned? Um, well, we don't know really know yet. We um, because some of them aren't written yet. Right. We do have a few that that we just weren't able to get done in the time frame we wanted to. Right. Uh, that that will probably end up on side B, but um, we we do want to have at least that number to choose from so right. that we can give everybody our best, you know. Cool. So um, I would say it probably won't be much less than that. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Let's go to the last track. Say I love you. Tell me a little bit about that song. Well. Um, <laughs> I called in sick from work one day. Uh -huh. uh, I wasn't even into. I was just in the. T I was just sitting down on the couch, and I thought, oh, I'll just play my guitar. I reached over and picked up my guitar, and it was just like what I did with it, the exact same thing happened to when I when I wrote um, um, from the last record. Right. Uh, it just it just came to me all of a sudden, and that's typically how I write um, it comes to me I've, I've said in many times it's, it's like as if God just grabs me by the ankles and shakes it out of me um, the whole production I hear I hear it in my head it just like it's downloading into my brain right and uh, that song was just like 
boom, it just, the lyric and everything just came out just like in 10 minutes. It was just like, whoa, my God, where is this coming from? Wow. Very but um, that, uh, that, that happens a lot to me. And actually, I dream songs, too. I find that I'm dreaming songs, like I'm listening to them on the radio. Right. And the hardest part for me is waking up and trying to get it down, the right. whole thing, but it's wake up I usually can only remember like a chorus or a few few things of the lyrics right, right. but it's you know one one of these days I'm gonna hopefully they'll have like a connection where we can just plug in a USB port to our head <laughs> <laughs> so do you got pen and paper right by the uh, by your bed I do yeah now I do <laughs> with the technology and everything I, oh my god I have so many I'm, with this iPhone I got so many like voice memos on it and all the time. Wow. Now, this is the, yeah. f- this is the fifth studio album, and uh, I guess the band started in 91. Uh, did you ever think, uh, you know, it would last this long? Oh, you know, you always hope for that. Right. Um, but, you know, and I, I've said this a lot, you know, back then, find, finding those guys was like finding my family, my rock and roll brothers, you know? Right soul brothers in this life and um and it's it's really true you know we went we went through a rough patch especially you know after i came out with all my issues and everything so right. um you know i i pretty much had a hard time in the you know uh with reconciling how i was going to do this because i just thought the one thing for me was like you know um i uh i just it was it was i realized after coming out that all those years that i was trying to be a rock star i wanted to be a singer i wanted to be famous from early on when i was like nine years old or in in third grade um was just a plea, a, a plea for help and, a, and a, just a way to look for love on a grand scale because I was so, I always felt unworthy of love all my life. Right. And so, and looking at it now, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So for me, that was what it was. It was all about me, my quest for love. And then when I realized when I came out and was being honest with myself for the first time in my whole life after 40 years of living like that and being an alcoholic and drugs to cope with everything, um, I realized that I could give myself love for the first time. And when I was able to do that, it, it, it was like the, it was so freeing for me at that time because uh, I thought, well, God, you know, what am I going to do? Well, the rock and roll industry pretty much shunned me, so I was forced to kind of have to go out and find another way of uh, to make a living. But then, you know, but, but before, whenever I thought, oh, my God, if I couldn't do music, I would kill myself. Right. Well, that, that feeling kind of immediately went away because I thought, you know what, all, all I ever really wanted in this life was just to be normal. Right. And you, the, you mean that now that I can just be myself, I can just go out and get a job and be one of the normal people who work for a living and be happy? Uh Well, the answer for me was a resounding yes. And so it made it a lot easier for me to just kind of say goodbye to the music industry at that time. And, um, And I thought for the longest time, I thought that I was just probably not going to get back into it. Right. But, um, uh, Bruce and Guy, Bruce and I had been on the skids after a while too because, and I, 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 I blame that on alcohol. I blame all that, all those problems on alcohol. Right. Because un, unknown to me at the time, in, on January 1st, 2008, right. Bruce got sober. Wow. That's great. And unknown to him, on July 10th of the same year in 2008, right. I got sober. Great. And he and I weren't talking any of those years up to this up to 2008. Mm-hmm. 
hadn't talked in probably 15 years. And uh, near Christmas time, I got I come home from work one day and I see the the light on my phone's blinking, so I knew I had a message. And when I listened to that voicemail, it was Bruce. Bruce called me back. Bruce called me out of out of the blue, just to wish me a Merry Christmas that year. And my heart just jumped a country mile because I I dearly love this guy. I mean, he's just such a nice. He's my soulmate. He's my soul brother musically, right. not sexually. I'm just talking about from brother to brother, right. mm-hmm. love for for a dear friend. And um, uh, I called him back, and we've not looked back since. And after a time, we just kept talking a little bit more and a little bit more. We we started talking about doing some more work together, and by by the time 2009. Came around in September of that year. Uh, you know, um, Frontiers offered us us to do a record, so we did. And um, it's just been it's been such a blessing in all of our lives, you know, because I really truly believe that that uh, the triad, Bruce, Guy, and myself, we're the triad. We're the original triad of of the creation of Unruly Child. We write all the songs. We were the ones that did, you know, all the demos earlier, you know, with all that stuff and got the deal with Interscope. And and um, um, so when we returned to that, I really feel that that's our true destiny in life. Right, right, right. And together we are strong. Cool. Very cool. Now, now do you ever, you know, with, with all you went through and stuff, do you ever think about, like, you know, I missed out on some things in life. Um, um, children, maybe. Um, you know, a different path that, that you wanted to follow and, and you really didn't. Or you're just happy the way you are. Well, I, I am happy the way I am, as as can, can be. Because all of those things you mentioned, uh, sure, you know. I mean, had it been different for me, you know, right. could I have a happy life, you know. But there's really no way I could have because what happened was the way it happened. Right. Can't undo it. And my philosophy has been since I've gotten sober is to just you know basically stay in the present, and I don't let myself get wrapped up too much about things in the future or things in the past. Right. Because you really can't do anything about those things. You just have to the the future happens as a result of your your decision that you make in the present so do i want to continue that that you know wringing of my hands and and worrying about what i did and then that becomes my self-fulfilling future of just more and more you know going around in circles right so yes i've thought about that and i've cried over that many times and i have you know been on drunks many times because of that right um but I can't, you know, I'm, I'm much happier that I'm sober and that I don't do that today. Right. Um, and I, I would have loved to do that had things been different. Sure. I would have just, like I said earlier, I wanted, all, really all I've ever wanted was just be normal. Right. And, um, you know, um, but I'm fortunate that uh, I have a family that loves me and that um, I've been able to be in the lives of all my 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 nieces and nephews and and be accepted and it's just it's been a real blessing for me so cool 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 well you know with Marcy it's uh, definitely you know experience talking to you and, and really enlightening and, and, and with your words you, you might have helped other people who listen to this uh, interview you know th- through your words and through your life M- maybe someone else will um, follow that same path and, and be happy the way you are and uh, I congratulate you for uh, sobriety and uh, plus a new album I mean what else can you ask for but uh, congratulations and uh, I really like talking to you, and it, uh, it's kind of emotional, and I really liked it, you know. So uh, congratulations, and um, would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Well, you know, if I could just one more sure. about the transgendered subject matter. Sure. We, have, we, we as, a, as the human race, have come a long way just since, you know, since in 20 years. Right. In our progressive, you know, thinking 
and our acceptance of things. Um, but but um, but I'm still kind of sad to report that uh, most people don't really understand the transgender dilemma. Right. Uh, uh, they can they think that if you're transgendered, you're gay. Uh-huh. Well, that's gay being being uh, sexual orientation or sexual preference and gender identity are what I've learned through years and years of therapy and and research. They're just completely different things. Right. One does not relate to the other. Uh, in my case, I'm not gay, but I'm transgendered. Right. So um, uh, the hardest thing for me to reconcile was that it was like, why in God's name would I want to go from being a relatively handsome guy who could find satisfying relationships with with straight women right. to at best a homely female, homely looking female <laughs> who isn't attractive to women. Right. You know. But I've learned. Uh, that the 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 key word in that question is want, right. because it's a choice. It's not a choice. Right. Uh, it's it's just the way my brain works, and uh, and that can never be changed, no matter how much therapy I go through. It's right. just the way it is, and that's why doctors have taken the stance over the years, for last sixty years of, or seventy years maybe of researching it, that. They've, they they set up a standards of, of practice and a way to treat people like this. And the most compassionate way is to just allow them to have surgery and, and complete what they feel in their head, right. their physical body. And so uh, the doctors know it, and it's just it's time that um, we as a human species get to know it too and just let everybody live and be let live, you know? Right. Definitely cool. Definitely cool. Well, like I said, congratulations on everything you're doing. And, uh, you know, hopefully the CD will be very successful. I, I liked it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess enjoy yourself and uh, have a good time. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there now? To, to all our loving fans out there who yes. are just the most awesome fans in the universe, just thank you. Thank you so much for sticking by us all these years. And uh, we love you. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And, um, you know, please, you know, go get your very own copy of Down the Rabbit Hole Unruly Child at, at uh, cdbaby.com or iTunes. And don't forget to look for us on Facebook at, at the um, Unruly Child Band page. and uh, Or you can come to our website at unrulychild.net. And uh, we just love you and don't give up. Five minutes before the miracle. Just keep believing. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks very much, Marcy. God bless, Brian. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye.